Hey, hey, it's me again. I haven't been anywhere near as regular as I thought I would be. Life, life gets in the way, you know, it just does. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but, but I'm here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do that. Uh, hang on, which in order to do that. I'm going to, you know, I got to like tweet and stuff. I'm not good at multitasking this type of thing. Um, okay, cool. There are people. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey, everybody. Hey, as usual, I'm paranoid. Can y'all, y'all can hear me okay? Y'all got me? Everybody, everybody good? All right. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. All right. I had to like, I had good. I, I had to like reconfigure everything with my, with my setup. It did. It was California was not good to me. Um, from a, from a equipment standpoint, it's hard to get all this stuff set up in a hotel room and blah, blah, blah. Um, so anyway, yeah, I'm back. Uh, the goal was to do this like every day. But like I said, life life gets in the way. I didn't know that I would be hopping back and forth between internet and TV throughout training camp. Uh, so it is what it is. But yeah, so the Cowboys are back in Texas, which means I'm back in Texas. Um, somehow there's only a few more days left in the preseason. This is gonna be this is gonna be a really interesting year in terms of the timing of the preseason because if you remember even last year, the Cowboys played four preseason games, which meant they were pretty busy all the way through. But um, they're going to play Seattle on Friday, and then we're just going to be done for like two friggin' weeks. Like the what the, that game's going to happen on the what the twenty sixth, I think. Yeah, the twenty sixth, and then they don't play until September eleventh. Uh, that's a hell of a layover. Um. So it'll be interesting. I can't I can't really believe that it's already wrapping up. And, you know, I think we're going to spend a long time like wondering what's going to happen this season without a whole lot to really go on. But uh, for the time being, we got we had a night practice last night. It was very fun, very productive. Um, and there will be another one tonight, like literally right now. I'm just I'm passing time waiting until it makes sense to head up to the star for the evening festivities. So like I said, on Twitter, I could be doing my laundry. I don't want to folding. My laundry is like my least favorite chore. I can't stand it. So I'd rather talk to y'all. Um, so let's answer some questions. Um, Derek wants to know if anyone can change their roster fate in this game. And I would say, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think for the most part, teams know what they want their 53 to be um, before, before that game even starts. And I think, it, I think it is hard to change it, but yeah. And really, I think it's probably harder to play your way onto a roster in the final preseason game. I think it's easier to play your way off of a roster. Like we've had seasons where uh, a guy just didn't put it all together, didn't put his best foot forward. Maybe a receiver had some issues with drops. I feel like, or which this isn't quite the same thing, but I feel like a few years ago, like John V. Johnson got hurt in this game and it kind of torpedoed what might've been a chance to make the roster. Um, so I would say, I think it's easier to play your way off. So like, I'm keeping an eye on like, like a Dennis Houston is a great example. Like he probably needs to play well in this game. I mean, it's a tall order to get him onto the roster anyway, but I do think he's got a good shot at it. Um, I would like to see him have a good game in this game. Um, Trying to think. I think the safeties are fine. Like, I think Maquamu and Bell are on the team regardless of what happens. I'm trying to think of some other guys that might be on the bubble. This could be a running back situation. Uh, maybe one of them has a really good game or conversely a really bad game that could change people's 
opinions of it. Um, so yeah, we will see. Um, oh, did I tweeted the studio link again? I'm an idiot. That's fine. Uh, my dog's good. He he seemed kind of mad at me when I first got home, but we're back in the grind. You know, I've been home since Sunday, so he's back used to seeing me again. Um, any shot, Will Greer is actually our backup. That goes okay. That goes back to my point just now. Is like I got. Hopefully, we get a long look at him. It still looks like he's dealing with his groin injury, so I don't know. Uh, <laughs> there's if you there. Uh, I have Kelsey Charles's dog today too. By the way, I am in unwilling babysitter of young Murphy. Uh, so hopefully he's not destroying my apartment while I'm not looking. Um, but yeah, Will Greer, I just, I hope we get to see an extended look at him. I think he would have to play out of his mind bonkers to take the backup job, to be honest with you. I just do. I think it carries a lot of weight that Cooper rush was able to go on the road and win a regular season game last year. I think the coaching staff trusts that they know what they're getting with him. He's just like, you know, he's like a Honda Civic. He's just a, he's just dependable. It's nothing that's going to get you excited, but you also know that it's probably not going to completely break down on the side of the road. Um, I do like, I think they carry three quarterbacks because I think Greer is too, too intriguing to let go of. And quarterback is like the one position where you're, you know, like you're, you're risking losing somebody to waivers if you cut a quarterback more so than other positions. So I think they carry three. Uh, we'll see what happened to Tyler Smith. Tyler Smith dinged his ankle in the game. Mike McCarthy said last night that he's fine and it's not a big deal. Football coaches also like to lie about injuries. So we'll see the severity. But uh, he was out at practice walking around pretty good yesterday. He wasn't wearing a boot or anything. So. I'll give Mike the benefit of the doubt that this isn't a big deal for the time being. Um, uh, I think so. I, I think uh, the question does Nashawn Wright make the 53 or is he a practice squad guy? I wrote about this. Shameless plug, go to foxsports.com, keep up with all my Cowboys content there. I did a 53 man roster projection. Um, actually, Ooh, I'll be like Kavanaugh. This is, I'll be like Kavanaugh and put it in the chat. How about that? Um, but yeah, I did a, uh, I did a roster projection and I think it's, I think it's fair to say that Kelvin Joseph and Sean Wright both have not had good camps. Uh, they just, or well, they haven't had good preseasons. Yeah. There's my roster. If you want to look at it. Um, Neither one of them has played well in the preseason. And if they weren't top 100 picks, I would think that their jobs were in danger. I really would. Um, but politics and resource allocation go into this. Um, so, and then you think about the fact Nashawn Wright's a hell of a special teamer as well. So, like, the Cowboys have a use for him. I would be surprised to see either of them get cut. I just would. Because after... I mean, and I know Deron Bland's been great. He's going to make the team. You don't have to worry about him. See that? Okay, Ernie, Bland, Joseph, Wright. Who's getting cut? None of them are getting cut. I think they all make the team. I think 11 DBs are going to be on this team. Six corners, five safeties. I don't think you have to cut one of them. Um, so I think, do I think like Kelvin Joseph or Nashawn Wright, do I think they would get cut if they were a fifth round pick? Yeah, I kind of do. But they're not. They're top 100 picks. And teams don't like to give up on those guys before they have to. Um, so I think they all make the team. I think if somebody gets hurt, I think Deron Bland might be, might have a quicker route to the playing field. I just don't know. I don't like the thought of playing Kelvin Joseph or Nashawn Wright against Tom Brady or Joe Burrow. I'll tell you that. Um, yes, I think Israel McQuamu is absolutely on this team. I think so you can go look at my projection. I got a B Trayvon Diggs, Jordan Lewis, Kelvin Joseph, Nashawn Wright, Deron Bland, and then at safety I've got Jaron Curse, Malik Hooker, Donovan Wilson, Marquise Bell, and Israel Mukwamu. I think all of those guys make the team, and then I think they probably bring bring back C.J. Goodwin after uh, the waiver period. Like you can cut C.J. Goodwin; he's a vested vet. Tell him to, you know, watch a movie, hang out at home for a couple days, and then you bring him right back if you want to. I think they could have as many as like twelve DBs on this team. Um, and I don't even think that would be hard to pull off. 
Um, <laughs> four running backs. Um, four running backs. I could I could see it happening. The thing is, is like I do. I will say this: like every year, we fall in love with these guys, and we're like, "You're not sneaking him through waivers if you cut him." It's not happening. And every year they do. Like in my time covering the team, I struggle to think of a guy that's been cut that didn't clear waivers. I'm sure it's happened once or twice, but like once or twice in 10 years is a pretty good hit rate. Uh, and especially at running back, like every, every team's got a running back with a little something, something that they feel good about. It's a, it's a yearly thing. And I mean, I don't mean that as a knock on Malik Davis or Rico Dowdle, but history suggests that you could cut one of those guys and keep them on your practice squad. So Four is possible because I think both of those guys have played really well, but I also think it's like, whatever, you cut one of them and get the other one through to the practice squad, and I don't think it would be a big deal. Do I think Michael Gallup lands on PUP? No, I do not. I really don't. I think the Cowboys are going to, again, if you put him on PUP to start the season, you lose him for a month. You don't get him back till week five at the absolute earliest. I think the Cowboys are going to hope that they can get him back sooner than that. I think he starts the season on the roster. Um, and I would, I week, th I want to say week three, but like maybe even week four. And yeah, I mean, that's only a one week difference, but that could make, that could make a hell of a difference. Um, uh, so yeah, no, I think, uh, I think Gallup starts the season on the roster. Um, yeah, I see you, Vach. What's up, dude? Appreciate you dropping by. I'm trying to get like y'all. Um, what else is going on? Basham, yeah, okay. Y'all are asking me about the D line projection. That one's tough, man. I I had him keeping ten, and like the last one or two spots are hotly contested. I think I think end is pretty easy. Uh, because Micah Parsons and Anthony Barr count as edge rushers in my book, at least, you know, part time. Uh, so you got Tank, you got uh, Dorrance. That's definite. Sam Williams is a definite. That's three. Um, Dante Fowler gives you four. And then so with Micah and Barr, you really have as many as six guys that can rush off the edge. Uh, I'll get to Basham in a minute because I think that goes in conjunction. So then D tackle is a little harder to sort out. I think. Um, Osa is obvious. Gallimore is obvious. Um, then you get to, which is, this is phenomenal, but Quentin Bohana has had a wonderful camp. Like, I think you have to consider him a lock. Um, who else? Am, uh, Chauncey Golston. Chauncey Golston, again, second year, top 100 pick. He's had a, he's been fine. Like, I, I would be surprised to see him get cut. So that gives you four. Uh, I feel like I'm forgetting somebody. Where's my damn roster? Um, I'm like drawing a total blank. Um, oh yeah. Well, I mean, John Ridgeway, which again, like it would just, it would be a surprise to see the Cowboys cut a rookie fifth round pick that hasn't happened very many times in my history here. Uh, so that gives you nine D linemen. And then you look at, Tristan Hill, you look at Terrell Basham, you look at Carlos Watkins. Those are really the big three names that I haven't mentioned who are left. Um, it's no disrespect to Basham. I left him off because, again, Parsons and Barr give you other, they give you help at edge rusher. I'm just not convinced you need the extra body. Uh, and then I, I think Tristan Hill has had a really great camp. He made a really great play against the Chargers the other day. I just think, um, maybe you opt for him over a veteran guy like Carlos Watkins. So I do, th I do think that's interesting though. Like those, those three names, Hill, Watkins, Basham, it'll be interesting to see what they do there. Just going Zach. I, so what about Chauncey Golson? I haven't seen anything impressive. Yeah. I mean, like, like I said, he's been fine. He hasn't been amazing, but Again, politics are part of this. He was drafted in the third round last year, and 
you don't see teams give up on guys drafted that highly that quickly. You, it just doesn't happen very often. Like you gotta, you gotta be a bad player and a bad guy to get cut in your second year usually, um, or or a really really bad player. Uh, and I don't think that describes Chauncey at all. Um. Expectations for game three of the preseason. What am I looking for? I'm really looking for more of the same. I'm looking to keep all the stars off the field, keep everybody from getting hurt, knock on all of the wood. I just knocked on my desk, knock on all of the wood, but like there really haven't been any super bad injury issues at this camp. All of the injuries have been pretty manageable. Uh, so get through it without getting anybody hurt. Um, and then, you know, I'd, I'd like to see. I'd like to see some more from the off from the young offensive lineman, to be honest with you. Matt will let's go practice yesterday. I would be surprised to see him play in the game. I, I don't know how realistic that is, but even Josh Ball, um, Matt Farniak, um, Aviante Collins, like, you know, any of those guys that can have a good game and make a practice squad statement or or make you feel better about what's on the roster. Um I do. Yes, Trevor. I mean, I, it's conceivable that they could try to trade a defensive lineman. Yes. Like I, you've, uh, you've probably heard whisperings about Tristan Hill over the last month or so, a, a guy that's like near the end of his contract, whose career hasn't really been wonderful. Maybe somebody else wants him more. It's hard to predict that stuff though. Cause like, what are you getting for him? Could you get, you're probably not getting anything better than like a day three pick, or maybe you swap for, another player of equal value. And I can hear you right now saying like, oh, we'll trade him for an offensive lineman. In theory, absolutely. I love that idea. But guess what? Nobody in the NFL has great offensive line depth. And if you do have it, then you want to keep it. Um, So I just, I don't know how good of a return they would get on that. But if somebody was willing to dance with me, I would absolutely, I would absolutely do that. Um, what else? What else? What else? Going back to the if I was looking to trade for a swing tackle again, like, I don't like, can you trade for a swing tackle? Because that implies that a team somewhere else in the NFL already has three offensive linemen that they feel great about and they're willing to trade their fourth or maybe i've seen the isaiah stuff uh isaiah win stuff get kicked around i would definitely be interested if the patriots are serious about that i would 100 percent be interested um other than that though like i would rather they just sign a vet i mean there are there are guys out there who have played tackle in this league who who aren't doing anything and now that training camp is winding to a close I have to believe they'd be willing to listen to offers. Uh, that's what I would try to do. Hmm. 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 Isaiah Wynn for Tristan Hill. Is that good enough? Like Isaiah Wynn is like, I mean, hasn't Isaiah Wynn, I'm pulling up his numbers right now. Like he's started a decent number of games in the league, hasn't he? Yeah. I mean, I know, and I know he's dealt with injuries, but I mean, he's started 25 games the last two years so like he's a pretty reliable starter i don't know if tristan hill is enough to get that done i would trade i'd probably trade tristan hill and like a pick not a high pick but like tristan hill and a fourth or a fifth for isaiah win yeah i would do that i would do that for sure if mason rudolph is the odd man out and cut in pittsburgh would you take him as qb2 um, yes, I think I would. I'm, I'm looking up his stats too. It's the beauty of not ever knowing what we're going to talk about. I mean, he started 10 games largely, you know, cause Ben got hurt in 19 and he had to play a lot. Um, I mean, they're not awe inspiring numbers, but they're better than either of the Cowboys guys have. Um, yeah, I'd probably do it, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Cowboys didn't, they just don't ever seem to be interested in other people's players. What do I see as the wide receiver depth chart for week one? Um, I see CD lamb 
Jalen Tolbert, uh, and then probably Noah Brown as your top three with a heavy dose of 12 personnel, Dalton Schultz and Jake Ferguson getting a lot of playing time. And then you probably try to manufacture five or six touches for Cavante Turpin as a gadget guy. I don't think Cavante Turpin is ever going to have a crazy snap count, but he could be the guy that comes in. Hopefully he could be a more effective Tavon Austin. Or if you remember a few years ago when they had Jordan Lewis as the jet sweep guy, hopefully he could be that guy, like, but way more effective, like come onto the field six times a game, scare the shit out of the defense carry the ball two or three times for 20 yards, maybe, you know, just send him on a go route and see what happens. That's kind of my, that's my vision for Cavante Turpin. But um, I think, I think week one, it'll be CD Noah and Tolbert. Um, Because even like, let's, even if they like claim a guy, like, remember they claimed Malik Turner a couple years ago, even if they claim a guy, it'll take him a couple weeks to get acclimated to the defense and like get up to speed. Um, So yeah, barring something crazy, I think that's probably your main trio against the Bucks, which is why I would guess they're going to play a decent amount of 12 personnel against the Bucks and lean on Schultz and Ferguson and, and maybe like have fewer three receiver sets. Yes, David, I do have my AC set on 50 degrees. It's hot as hell in Dallas and I hate being hot and I'm willing to pay a little bit more for a higher electricity bill. So I keep it, I keep it cool in here. I really do. Um, <laughs> yeah, Aaron, that's what I was talking about with Cavante Turpin. Aaron is, I mean, I don't know. I'd be surprised if he ever had more than like a dozen snaps in a game. That seems, that seems right to me for your fifth or sixth receiver. Who's also your return man. Yes. I would make a late round trade for Denzel Mims or Marvin Jones, throw Jalen Rager in there as well. I absolutely would, would do something like that. Um, Do I actually like the Cowboys? Is that just where I ended up? Yeah, it's it's a weird thing to try to explain to people. Like in journalism, like you don't you don't you don't really pick where you go. You don't. I mean, some people I know people that have gotten really lucky. My good buddy Nick Eatman over at the Mothership, he grew up a Cowboys fan and was lucky enough to get a job covering the Cowboys. But the vast majority of us aren't that lucky. You just go where the job is. And yeah, I, I would have never imagined myself covering the Cowboys when I was a kid, but I'm thrilled to be here. They're the most entertaining team in the league. I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, yeah, of course the Cowboys have a legit chance to beat the Bucks. I mean, they're at home. They're still a good team. I mean, I know it feels kind of doom and gloom and rightfully so in my opinion like i think the cowboys have a lot of questions that remain unanswered but the bucks have plenty of their own i mean the bucks offensive line is a mash unit right now uh and like i said it's a home game it's going to be AT&T is going to be uh, it's it's not always a great crowd but that'll be a great crowd cuz it's sunday night season opener um they absolutely have a chance to win uh yeah Who was my favorite player to cover this training camp? One offense and one defense. Not necessarily the best player, just who I enjoyed covering personally. I will like I've said this a million times. I'm very impressed by Tyler Smith. He's like he seems like a, a great dude. Uh, you can tell he really cares about this. Uh, you can tell that he's gotten better. You can tell that he's put the work in. He's just for just having turned 21 the other like a few months ago like he's he's just an incredibly impressive person like he's he's way more thoughtful than I was when I was 21 uh so it's been really fun getting to know Tyler um Micah is a pretty obvious answer because of just how good he is um and I'll uh, I'll say this 
Sorry, haters. It's it's been fun to see Anthony Brown get some shine because I've been saying for like two years that he's a lot better than he gets credit for. And he's been playing like it this month. Um, and so like in year it's year seven for him. So shout out Anthony Brown for like putting it all together. I, I really hope he takes it to the season because he deserves it. He deserves uh, he deserves more credit than he gets. And I think this this month has been big for him uh so yeah there you go um why not bring in a vet like eric fisher and use Steele as a swing tackle or the i mean i don't even think you need to replace terrence Steele, but yeah like Throw some damn money at Eric Fisher and have him come be the swing tackle. Throw some money at, I'm pretty sure Daryl Williams, formerly with the Bills, is still available. I'm pretty sure, I bet, I don't know. I don't know what he's doing these days, but I bet you could throw 1.5 mil at Jason Peters and get him to come out of retirement. Like, there are guys on the street who I think you could hire to be your swing tackle. And if they, like, I don't get why they haven't done it already, but there's still plenty of time. They should absolutely do that. But look, I mean, I t I don't know why they haven't done it. I can't I can't tell you that. They like the guys they have. Earn it. Why why do we all see the need for O line depth, but the Cowboys don't? Say, I mean, it's a tale as old as time. Like they they have a high degree of confidence in the guys in their building. Some would call it irrational confidence. The cynical side of that might say. They don't feel like spending the money for the talent upgrade required. I don't know. I don't know what the 100% truth is. I will say, like I said, I mean, the season doesn't start until September 11th. So there's there's time, but it's running out quickly. Um, What else we got? Will James Washington end up on the IR to start the season? So... The thing I always tell people to keep in mind is you have to be on the roster for 24 hours before you can be moved to injured reserve. Otherwise, you can't come back. Like if James Washington were to be put on injured reserve today, his season would be over. Uh, and they don't want to do that. So they will keep him on the roster for a day and then they will move him to injured reserve. And that's when you can use that roster, roster spot to bring back like a CJ Goodwin or a Luke Gifford or even like a Terrell Basham, like whoever, who, whoever, but they, they do it all the time. They're definitely going to do it next week. Just get ready for it. They're going to cut like three guys and tell them to hang out at home for a couple days. And then they'll move Washington. Maybe we'll let's go guys like that. They will move those guys to injured reserve. Uh, and then they can bring those guys back. They've been doing it for years at this point. Um, what about the international tackle? Kevin Harper asks Isaac Alarcon. He's still here. He's made a lot of progress. He still has the international exemption for one more year. He will be on the team. It'll just be in a practice squad spot. Like I just, I don't think it's realistic to think that he's somebody that's going to help the regular, the team in the regular season. I just don't think. Uh, he's, he's gotten a lot better, but that's a testament to how raw he was when he got here. It just, it is what it is. I mean, you're talking about a guy who played in Mexico, who never played against big time high school or college talent. Uh, so I think, you know, he's going to hang out on the practice squad and continue to develop, but I, I don't think you need to talk about Isaac as like an option to play swing tackle or anything like that. <laughs> Has Jerry ever said, what up, Dave, in the hallway? No, he has not. But uh, working in the building, you do you do have funny run-ins. Like, I tell this story a lot, but you know, have you ever, like, have you ever done that awkward thing where, like, you're going into a bathroom right as somebody else is coming out of a bathroom and you kind of, like, you do the little shake where you're like, oh, oh, I'm so sorry, that type of thing? I did that with Jerry Jones one time, and it took – my brain like 30 seconds to even register i was like holy crap like i just played i just did the oklahoma drill with jerry jones in the doorway of the bathroom uh so that was kind of and then that happened like 
that was like one of the first few months that I worked for the Cowboys. So it was like really surreal. I was like, wow. So like you really do just kind of bump into Jerry Jones in the bathroom here. That's fun. Uh, that, that type of stuff happens all the time. Like I've got more stories about that than I could even hope to tell. Um, yeah, I, I, apo yes, I definitely have told that story before. I apologize. I'll try to think up some new ones. Ferguson showed me more than expected. Could you see him as our future tight end one? Um, I mean, I, th I agree with you. He has really surprised and impressed me. Like I didn't have high hopes for what he would do as a rookie. Uh, but he's had two great preseason games. I still want to see him do it in the regular season. I don't think it's, it's not fair to anybody to be like, Oh, he has 50 yards in the preseason. He's our new net. He's our new starting tight end. But I'm very encouraged about where he is, and that's the hope. I mean, the hope is that Jake Ferguson has a great rookie year and makes you feel comfortable moving on from Dalton Schultz if that's what you want to do, or maybe tagging him again so you don't have to commit long term. That's definitely the hope. Uh, but let's let's see how it goes over the course of 17 games. Um. There is a deadline that makes veteran contracts not fully guaranteed. Yeah, so like if you're signed after the start of the regular season, then your contract's not fully guaranteed. And yeah, that's a good point. Like they might try to take advantage of that loophole as well. Like the roster, I know it's a cliche, but the roster is never actually done being built. You know, like the initial 53 is a myth because they change it 24 hours later and then they'll change it 36 hours after that. And then somebody will get hurt in the season opener and they'll have to bring somebody in. So there's a lot more stuff coming that we don't know about. I don't know if that means they're going to like sign a swing tackle. I really think they should, uh, but we'll see. Um, Huh. How about every time I'm on here, I get one or two stories. Uh, yeah. Or, or yeah. I, I mean, I'll tell y'all stories about whatever you want. Yeah. You just, you gotta, you gotta jog my memory a little bit. Like if you ask me about something specific, I can come up with a story, but like, I don't know, there's, there's a lot floating around in there. It's hard for me to keep it all straight. Um, do I think the team purposely made the passing game worse so they, they can be forced to run the ball more? I hope not because, God, that's counterintuitive and stupid. But I do um, – In a, I mean, I think that's their goal this year is to, like I – th I mean, I think they want to get back to smash mouth style. I know that's not going to make everybody happy, but I think that's why Tyler Smith is here. And he looks the part. I know his, you know, he, he's got some stuff to clean up, but you can't deny his power. You can't deny the way that he moves people out of the way. I think the Cowboys want to be able, like, I think the Cowboys ideally would like to have 2,000 yard backs this year. And in their mind, that would take a lot of the pressure off of Dak in the passing game. So, like, I don't know if they made it worse on purpose because the passing game is just too important in the modern NFL. But, that seems to be the situation that they've created for themselves. And uh, we'll see if we'll see if the offensive line can hold up well enough for them to do that. It's the thing. I mean, the starting five, I think, is fine. But the depth just scares the bejesus out of me when you think about the fact that Tyron Smith has had as many injury issues as he has. Overall, do you feel like the NFC is somewhat weaker than usual? Why aren't the Cowboys moving in the direction to take advantage of that? Yes, and I don't know. Sorry. I mean, there's only two or three teams that I think are definitively better than the Cowboys in the in the NFC right now. And that's it's perplexing to me. I just don't feel like they've really done that much to position themselves to be better than last year. Like hoping that all of your rookies hit and play like badasses right out of the gate is not a strategy. It's a hope. And I, th part of me thinks the Cowboys are a little bit deluded by how good Micah Parsons was last year. Like the idea of like, Oh, well we didn't know how good Parsons was and look how that turned out. And they're just banking on it happening again. Whereas you should typically say, man, 
Mike is amazing, but we can't count on our first round pick being an all pro every year. So we should probably do a little bit more than just bank on our draft class, but you know, it's their team. They do what they want. Hmm. 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 I'm not taking you on a tour of my apartment. Definitely not now. Like there's there's laundry drying everywhere. Uh, it's it's real messy. Yeah, and my suitcase from California is still sitting opened on the floor. Are we still looking for a kicker? Um, not right now. I don't think so. Maybe again, you know, we'll we'll have to see who's available when roster cuts happen. Um, but I I think. I think they feel pretty good about Brett Maher, the way that they ended the kicking competition before we even got to a third preseason game. Like Brett Maher has only attempted one field goal in the preseason, the 61 yarder, which I don't blame him for missing that. That's fine. But like he's only attempted one field goal in the preseason, but I think it's just obvious. I think, I think his leg strength, I think they, they value his leg strength over Liram Hirolahu's Hirolahu just does not have like a crazy good leg. Uh, and I think they trust the fact that Maher has kicked in the NFL for three seasons. Um, so like, I, I'm not going to go as far as to say they feel comfortable, but like, no, they don't feel great, but I think they're comfortable. That's what I'll say. Derek says, and I'm going to hop off after that. I got like, I mean, I, I, I keep doing this for like an hour and it's, it's eating into my schedule. So I'm going to hop off in a sec, but Jerry Jones said success would be being viable in the playoffs, which to me means they've got to get there and win at least a game. Uh, so maybe maybe that me, you know, like in my mind, I see the Cowboys probably being the three or four seed in the playoffs. If they make it, you know, win win the East at 10 and seven as the four seed. So you got to win your division and win, win a game. If they win, if they win their division and win a game, even if they lose in the divisional round, which will just make everybody mad. But if they do that, then that's a successful season for the way that this team is constructed. And I think that would buy Mike McCarthy another year. Um, let's say, you know, let's say they're the four seed and they host the, uh, who else is good? The freaking they host the saints who are the wild card out of the NFC South or the Vikings. How about Cowboys Vikings at AT AT&T four versus five? Um, if they win that game and then lose in the divisional round to like green Bay or the Rams or the bucks or something. Um, I think that's enough to, to keep Mike McCarthy in place. Um, yes, Kathleen, if I have one piece of advice for you about fantasy football draft, Dalton Schultz, if you're in a PPR league, if you're in a if you get points for receptions, draft Dalton Schultz. He's gonna catch like a hundred passes and probably flirt with a thousand yards. Uh I think Dalton Schultz just has like he's gonna score 10 points every week. He might not ever like blow up for 40, but he's gonna score like 10 to 15 points every single week. And occasionally he might have, you know, like a 20 point game. I think he's just gonna be he's gonna be steady Eddie all year long. Um, and depending on when you can get Zeke, I think Zeke is a really good value too. Like maybe not in a cowboy league. That's I hate playing fantasy football with cowboy fans because y'all overvalue everybody. So I'll be playing, you know, I'll be expecting to get Zeke like in the third round and somebody drafts him fifth overall. And I'm like, what are we doing? Uh, so if you're playing with non cowboy fans, I think Zeke is a really good value. If you're playing with Cowboy fans, Zeke will probably be gone in the top 10. Um, All right. I did 40 minutes. That feels pretty good. Uh, I appreciate it. I'll try to be back a little bit more regularly. 
Uh, shoot, maybe I'll even do this tomorrow because it's the same situation. So we'll see. No promises, but whatever. I appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll talk to you all later.